Hello everybody, E here. Uh, welcome back to another video. Today we're doing a book tag. I've never done one before, so um, if I stumble, if I stutter, please don't think ill of me. Um, JB Taylor of Taylor Talks, I'm going to put him up right here. He tagged me to do this. Um, and also, uh, Jen Bernardini did this one also, and I'll put her up there. Okay? Um, so go check out their videos. Um, I'm going to link to their channel. You're going to have to find a video yourself. Um, anywho, we're going to jump right into it uh, because this is going to be a long video. It's 25 questions. I'm not sure if JB did these himself, um, but let's go. So number one, what is the best piece of advice you've ever received? That would be uh, from one of the first editors I ever worked with. Um, she told me... Uh, when we were talking about negative reviews, she told me anytime you get a negative review and it bothers you, some negative re reviews aren't going to bother you, um, and it bothers you, go look at some of your favorite books, um, and mine is Stephen King's It, he said go look at your favorite books and look at all their one star reviews because no book gets all five stars. Um, and that, that helped me out quite a bit because if that's something I loved, like my own work, if that's something I loved and this many people hate it, because there's like a thousand one-star reviews on Stephen King's It. Um, and they all have to do with that one scene, you know what I'm talking about. Um, but uh, it, it helps to be able to know that you like something and other people hate it. And that's okay. Uh, that, so that's the best piece of advice I ever received. What's the most ridiculous fact you know? Um, this one actually comes from my father-in-law. May he rest in peace. Uh, <laughs> what's the difference between ketchup and fancy ketchup? Is the rate of pour. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> All right, number three. What three famous people, living or dead, would you want at your fantasy dinner party? Uh, Stephen King, of course, you guys you guys could pick that one. Tom Waits and John Irving. I would love to sit there and talk to all three of them. And I, yet, I, I know John Irving is not the most pleasant individual to be around, but I would still like to try and try and get deeper into him. No, not deeper into him, but deeper into him. Deeper into his mind. <laughs> uh, so number four, uh, if you didn't have to sleep, what would you do with all the extra time? Um, I, I spend time with my family and read more. I guess. I mean, there really is, there really is nothing else that I like to do. Um, I'm not that big on movies or sports or any of that other stuff. I would probably read. I mean, I already write. I already write as much as I can um, due to my back, uh, sitting in the chair, but I think that it would be, it'd be awesome to be able to read and hang out with the family more. Um, so number five, what are your three favorite movies? In order of appearance, Howard the Duck, Robocop, and Goonies. Those three movies. Actually, okay. I'm going to cheat a little bit here because it's actually a tie for coming of age. So, well, Goonies isn't really coming of age. It's more like a, you know, an adventure. Because um, they don't, I don't think they come of age as much as they do in Stand By Me. But it's a tie between Goonies and Stand By Me. Um, what is the sexiest and least sexy name? Um, sexiest would probably be Shell <laughs> because it's my wife's name. I mean, I don't really find names sexy in that way. Uh, or, it, you know, in this, in, I don't find names attractive, you know, I find people and traits and character and that, that kind of thing attractive. Um, the least sexy name, John. I mean, I can't think of one that, you know, it sounds like a toilet. I mean, I'm sorry, Johns. I know John D might, might be watching it, but sorry. Uh, <laughs> anyways, let's see, why does quicksand work slowly? Because irony. I actually have no idea. Um, eight, what is the first thing you notice when meeting new people? Um, probably their hair. Um, and the reason for this is very specific. Um, I was dating this girl, I, I was probably in my early 20s, um, and she got her hair cut. And I didn't notice. Um, she got it cut and highlighted, I think. Um, and I didn't notice because I had had a really, really bad day. That's not really an excuse. I should notice the person that I'm with. Um, but... Uh, she literally dumped me on the spot because I didn't notice her hair. So now it's kind of almost like a post-traumatic stress. It's a, it's a trigger. It's like as soon as I see somebody, I have to, you know, make sure their hair is the same way. Um, 
or if their hair looks funny, if it's the first time I'm meeting them. Um, I don't know. It's, it's just one of those quirks about me. So it's always the hair. Uh, number nine, what fictional place would you most like to go? I got to thinking about this um, when I saw uh, JB's uh, video. And I said the very first thing that popped into my mind was Midworld. You know, because I want to I wanna own a Billy Bumber, Bumbler. But I really don't want to live in that world. That world is a scary-ass world. I just don't want to live there because... I'm I'm a lover, not a fighter. No, I'm just kidding. But I I don't I don't want to be scared for my life all the time, and that's how I figure it'd be if I lived in you know in Midworld. So I'm going to actually go with a a place that I love to read about, but I didn't actually like the books, which was uh, the Harry Potter's world. I'd love to go to Hogwarts. I'd love to visit that because I love the world that Rowling created. I just I don't like her writing style. Um, and it's too plain for me. Even though she's imaginative, her writing is too plain. Um, that, that's just my opinion, of course. I'll leave all the hate down there in the comment section. Um, and let's see here. Where was I going with that? I can't remember, so I'm going to go on to the next one. Uh, number 10. If you could time travel, where would you go and why? The future? I would say up until my death. I don't... I don't really want to go, and yes, it's egotistical, I wouldn't really want to go farther than that. I'd like to know, you know, what I accomplished, what I did, that kind of thing. I mean, it, it would all be all about me, 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 sorry, it's true, um, but that's where I'd go. I'd go into the future, probably up until the point of my death. Um, I would like to see who showed up at the funeral, if anybody, <laughs> by that point. Uh, number 11, uh, what would be your first question after waking up? From being cryogenically frozen for a hundred years, where's the food? I love to eat, as you can tell. I didn't get this sexy figure, from, you know, by sitting around the house. Well, actually, I did. I didn't get this sexy figure by not eating. Um, number 12. What sport would be the funniest to add a mandatory amount of alcohol to? Hockey. <laughs> Plain and simple. I'd love to see those guys. They already fight <laughs> enough as it is. But throw it and come on. I mean, drunk people on skates. Let's do this. Uh, number twelve. No, that that was number. That was number twelve. Did I skip something? No. Number thirteen. Lucky number thirteen. Who would win between a in a fight between Spider Man and Batman? Gonna have to go with Spider Man because I mean, if we're talking MCU and DC, let's talk move the movie universe here. If we're talking that, I mean, Spider Man has Iron Man. Well, even the comic books, Spider Man has, you know, Tony Stark on his side. So he has the technology, technological ability that old Bruce Wayne and Lucius Fox have, but he's got Spidey sense. Batman doesn't have Spidey sense. He just has a whole lot of training. So yeah, Spider-Man gonna take it. I'm sorry, this is how it's gonna go. What's your favorite genre of book or movie? Uh, favorite genre of book is literary horror. Um, those two things together. And movie would probably be just straight up horror. Like I will, I love the cheesiest, stupidest horror. Uh, some of my favorite horror movies are like the Child's Play franchise or Chucky franchise. Let's be honest. There's more movies with Chucky in the name than Child's Play now. Um, or uh, the Puppet Master ter or Puppet Master. I can't remember if it's the Puppet Master or just Puppet Master. Terrible, terrible movies. Killjoy by like the same producer. Terrible movies. I love that shit, though. All right, um, how do you feel about... Sorry, number 15. Uh, <laughs> how do you feel about putting pineapple on pizza? Yes, please. I've loved it ever since I was a child. I actually don't know too many people other than all of Twitter that don't like pineapple on their pizza. Everybody in my family likes it. Everybody I know personally likes it. So I don't know, I don't know what the problem is. We're not talking about peas and mayonnaise. Uh, number six. Team. <laughs> if you could turn any activity into an Olympic sport, uh, what would you have a good chance at winning a medal for? Eating hot stuff. If you guys have been a fan of the channel for long enough, you know I ate the entirety of... Sorry to put my armpit all in your face. The, Jen actually sent this, so we're still on topic. This is the world's hottest chocolate bar. Um, I actually ate the entire thing in an Is It Nasty? Just search... Uh, world's hottest chocolate bar, Edward Lauren. Just search for that. I'll put that up in a minute so I don't put my pit all up in your face again. Um, so eating hot stuff, I would win uh, the Olympics for that. Number 17, if you could know the absolute and total truth to one question, 
what question would you ask? What happens after we die? Um, I'm not a religious person, um, but I would like to know, am I wrong? I mean, that's what I, that's, that's my main thing. I want to know, am I wrong? Um, I don't think I am. Um, I'm not agnostic. I don't believe in any higher power or anything like that. If anything, I believe it'd be that, uh, this is all a computer program or simulation of some kind, which is, I mean, but don't get me wrong. I'm not a theorist or a conspiracy theorist in that realm. I don't think that that is the end all be all truth. Um, okay, uh, number 18, would you rather fight 100 duck-sized horses or one horse-sized duck? I have fought, not fought, I have escaped, like, five ducks, um, so there is, there's no way I'm going after, I don't know, but I do own, I do own weaponry that would help with one horse-sized duck, so I'm gonna go with that one. Um, 19, you are, who are the three greatest living musicians love this question um i have very strong opinions on this tom waits mike gianelli and john gom <laughs> i hope i got john gom's last name right i've never actually heard it pronounced but it's g-o-m-m -M. um all three of those guys are amazing at what they do um two of them are guitarists i'm not sure if mike gianelli plays with a band or not um I, or if he does the entire composition himself when he sits down his first album is instrumental uh, the next two he has a singer and i actually prefer the first one without the especially for writing if you guys if you guys want some writing music look up mike gianelli's gravity gianelli is g-i-a-n-e-l-l-i Alright, next, uh, what do you think Shrek meat tastes like? Chicken? No, that that's a cheat. Um, it probably tastes like the swamp. Probably tastes funky. Like, really, really gamey and nasty. Um, 21, since bread is square, then why is sandwich meat round? Well, that's easy, because the, the, the meat comes out in a tube. In a pro they process it and grind it up. In a and bread, I mean, the pans are square. Right? I mean, at when you go to Subway, you got the, the long thing, but they put those things in the... Never mind, you know what I'm talking about. Um, maybe you don't, because I think I was just rambling there. But yeah, the bread bread pans are square, right? I mean, that's why. Um, and meat, too. Um, probably need to stop doing this. <laughs> 22. What was the best book or series that you've ever read? Best book would be Stephen King's It. Best series would be the dark tower i'm a fanboy man i can't i can't help it i'm sorry go go on go, don't at me um let's see here number 23 what is something that a ton of people are obsessed with but you just don't get the point of josh mailerman's bird box um number 24 what could you give a 40 minute presentation on with absolutely no preparation stephen king if you guys didn't, I mean, I can I can talk about that dude for hours, um, whether it be his personal life or his books or his awards or any of that stuff. Um, oh boy, we had 13 minutes. I'm glad we're at the last <laughs> at the last one, number 25. What is the most impressive thing you know how to do? Um, I I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna say write. Um, that that's about it. Uh, and if you don't think I'm a good writer, then it's not that impressive to you, but that's the, I mean, the way I, the way these things, the, the plots, the characters, all these things just kind of happen, um, because I don't plot. If you've ever read my stuff, I don't sit down and I don't plot. Uh, it all just pops up into my head, and usually what's there to begin with is what ends up staying. Um, I've never changed a huge plot point. Um, I have cut some endings, um, but I've just cut you know, that, that, like, extra material at the end. I haven't actually cut, like, the ending ending, if you get what I'm saying. But anyways, that's everything. That's been 25 questions. Book tag. I am going to tag, um, let's see here, Stephanie from That's What She Read. I don't know if she'll even watch this video, um, but I'm, I'll tag her. Um, and I can't, oh, Landon. Let's do Landon. Um, Landon's channel. I'll leave links to both of their channels down there. I'm going to tag both of you. Hopefully you guys see it. I'll tag you on Twitter too. And if you guys don't want to do it, then don't worry about it. Anyways, until next time, I have been E, you have been you, this has been another video. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye-bye.